So a lot of people have been asking on how to add a downslime to my M1 combat system. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. It's actually not as hard as it seems. I'm going to show you how to make it in the most easiest way possible. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create our animations. If you're using Classic Animator, go to Avatar, Rig Builder, R6 or R15, anything works, and click on Block Avatar. If you're using Moon Animator, then go to Plugins, Character Inserter. Now you can uh, go to it. You can click on any character. I'm just gonna do my avatar and I'm gonna make it R6 and insert and put it down somewhere in the game. Now this is an important step, otherwise it won't work. Go to home, game settings, avatar, and select the avatar type to whatever the rig you inserted in is. If you don't do this, then you'll probably get issues with the animation doesn't play or it doesn't do damage. You'll get stuff like that. So I'm just going to close the screen. I'm going to be using Moon Animator. So I'm going to click on Moon Animator and select the rig that I want to animate on. Click on New Rig Animation. Rig name and path must be unique because I already have one here. I'll just delete this. I'm going to click on new rig animation. I'm going to move it a bit to create a keyframe. Make it go up a bit more and then move it down. I'll select all these keyframes and drag it closer. I'll move the leg up. If you want to move one of the parts and start rotating, press R on your keyboard and move it up. Now click on the three dots, name it, name it whatever you want. I'll just call it down slam. Set the priority to action since that's the highest animation priority. If the priority is under action, then you can get issues where animations overlap each other. like. The downslime animation won't play because the walking animation is playing. So this is why you need to set your priority to action. Press OK. Now go to file and click as save as. And just press OK. Now close your moon animator window. Click on the arrow next to your rig. And you should see a model called anim saves. Press the arrow on Anim Saves and you'll get your downslide animation. Now just right click and save to Roblox. I'm just gonna name it Downslam Wid. Save. Now copy the animation ID and close this window. Now I'm just gonna close my rig and go to Replicated Storage. Hover over Replicated Storage and you'll see a plus button. Click on it and create a folder. Click on the folder and name it animations through here. If you don't have this window, then go to view and enable explorer and properties. I already have a folder called animations, so I'm not gonna do this step. Now inside your folder, create an animation, an animation object. It should be called animation. Um, you can name it whatever you want. I'll just call it downslam. Just remember that you have to mention this in your code and paste in the animation ID. Now, if you're using regular animator, just click on your rig, press animation editor. You should get a small window here. Uh, I'm just gonna put it in the center. When you click on a new rig, you should see something called create new animation. Just press okay. And when you're done animating a classic animator, go to the three dots, set your animation priority to action and publish to Roblox. Now it's time for the scripting part. So go to your M1 combat script and go to the client-sided part. This is what mine looks like. So go to the part where you define your variables. A variable is like a container to hold certain information. We're gonna create a Boolean variable. So basically Boolean means true or false. So 
I'm going to go here and do local is down slam is equal to false. Now over here, do local in air. This is going to be a variable to check whether we're in the air or not. Usually a down slam is we jump and we kick and we kick the opponent down with our legs. So for that, we need to code in the functionality that if we jump, then something will happen. We're getting something called a humanoid state. Inside every player that joins the game, there will be something called a humanoid. It's basically used to control and modify the player. Like dealing damage is also a function of the humanoid. Humanoid. And we're using an inbuilt function called get state. So if you're wondering what a state is, it's basically like what the player is doing. So running will be a state, jumping will be a state, falling is also a state. So now I just do is equal equal to enum the, the humanoid state type dot freefall. Freefall basically means you're falling. Do or humanoid get state is equal equal to and I'm the humanoid state type dot jumping. Now on this line, do if not in air, then I'll just paste the animation and firing remote part inside of this if statement. Basically over here we're saying if we're not jumping or falling, then create a variable called anim animation table based off the combo number and play the animation send a remote to our server if you don't know what server is there are two things called client and server server is basically like the stuff that shows on screen like vfx sound effects animations so on and client is basically the back end stuff the stuff that doesn't show on screen or the main mechanics of your game like detecting clicks so we're sending our remote to the server as a signal that something has happened we're giving you some information use that information to do something and the information we're sending is combo now let's code it in to check with whether we're actually falling or we're jumping so do else if in air then Local down slam anim local down slam anim is equal to rs dot so basically in my script rs is replicated storage on this line here animations folder and do colon find first child down slam if your animation object is not named down slam then just change this to your animation object name so find for shell basically means we're finding something, we're finding a specific object inside our animations folder. Oh, and let's do humanoid dot animator. So inside every player's humanoid, there's something called an animator. It helps with loading and playing animations. Colon load animation. Now we're loading our animation and let's play our animation. So down slam anim play. Now go two lines under and do is down slam is equal to true. We're setting our is down slam boolean that we made over here to true. In our server script, this is gonna check whether we're down slamming or not so we can actually add the down slam functionality. And now let's send our server a message to tell that we're down something. Combat remote. So what our remote is called. Fire server. Combo is down slam. Make sure you have it in this exact sequence. Okay, first let's check if our animation is playing. And I'm going to turn on shift lock. Now, jump click. So jump, oh, jump click. Yes, our animation plays. I think I made mine a bit too slow, so it looks kind of strange. 
but it should be good. Now I'm going to stop. And I'm going to go to my M1 server script. Now, basically, you're saying is if our remote is on the server, we're going to connect it to a function and we're going to take the information that we were given. Player is the default information. On the client, we sent combo. And now we're going to add is down slam. Now, on the very bottom of our script, there should be a bunch of if statements to see if our combo number is four or less than four. We'll go underneath there and do else if is down slam is equal equal to true. Then let's do enemy humanoid take damage and our damage amount. So let's just do 20. Let's see if it does damage right now. Oh, and by the way, you can't really check damage on your moon animator rig. So it has to be a regular inbuilt Roblox rig. Jump, click, jump, click. Okay, and it doesn't work. So then what if we comment this part out? Oh, I see why. Okay, just go go completely underneath else and do if is down slam then enemy humanoid take damage and the amount of damage i'll just put 20 again jump click yes and it does damage as well jump click jump click now let's just add knockback to our down slam so i've already created knockback over here let's add knockback to our down slam as well so to do that do local vel is equal to instance dot new linear velocity enemy character dot humanoid root part. So basically this line means we're creating a variable called velocity. And this variable is going to hold a new object that we're creating in code. And it's going to be something called linear velocity. And we're putting linear velocity inside the enemy character's humanoid root part. It's like the humanoid, but a bit different. We can use the humanoid root part to add particle effects, to add velocity, and so on. Now, do local attachment is equal to instance.new attachment. And we're putting this in the enemy character's. Let's just copy paste that. Human root part. Now do velocity dot attachment zero is equal to attachment. So basically velocity needs to be relative to something. So we're just gonna make it relative to the attachment we just made. Now do velocity dot max force is equal to a hundred thousand. Now do ve vel dot Vector velocity is equal to vector three dot new zero zero one hundred. This is basically the direction where we're pushing the player to. So here we're pushing it backwards. And now do vel dot enabled is equal to true. We're making sure the velocity is enabled right now. Uh, just do wait. Point one. So we're asking the computer to take a break for a while and not do anything. And then we're going to do velocity.enabled is equal to false. We're turning the velocity off. We're destroying our attachment. And we're destroying our velocity. Jump, click. Oh, wait. Jump, click. But it's moving a bit slow. So to fix that, just do task dot wait. So task dot wait is basically just like wait, but it's more smoother. Anyways, that's the end of the video. If you face any issues or errors, 
contact me on Discord. Now, see you on the next video. Goodbye.